Hi, my name is Stephen J. Waller and I'm going to give an example of auditory illusions at archaeology sites. And I have here a volunteer who is going to experience auditory illusion for the first time. So before we begin, I need to test your hearing. Okay? So close your eyes and tell me if you can hear this tuning fork. Okay, now keep your eyes closed and count out loud how many times you think I'm passing my hand between your ear and the tuning fork. In other words, how many times you hear the sound being blocked. Okay, ready? Okay, like seven times? Okay, now let's do it with your eyes open. Okay. Well, keep facing the same direction. Okay. <laughs> do the same thing. But see, it's not really my hand passing between no, your ears. Right what you are experiencing is an auditory illusion based on an interference pattern. Oh my we God. have we have the two tines of the tuning fork acting as two different sound sources. You can stay here. But one of the times is putting out a um, sound wave, which is high and low pressure of waves. And the other time is also putting out the same frequency. So at certain points, the sound waves will cancel each other out. The high pressure from one will correspond to the low pressure of the other and it'll cancel each other out. It's destructive interference. Okay. And it gives an interference pattern. You kind of have to squint a little bit to see the, uh, the rays coming out of here. So all I was doing was rotating. Oh, you're rotating it. Right. So that you could hear the loud and soft okay. where um, it was alternating between the, um, the constructive interference and the destructive interference. Um, so now picture it on a large scale out in an open field. I had two pipers playing the exact same note, just like the tuning fork, and it was setting up an interference pattern on a large scale. And as people would walk around it, they would get the illusion that there were these massive objects in a ring blocking the sound. This is what one art student did in response to an interference pattern as she walked around it. Even though there was nothing in the field except two pipers, she imagined it being a ring of rocks that were blocking the sound, when in reality it was just the sound waves canceling each other out. Were the pipers like moving around? No, the pipers were still, and this, well, in this case, the pipers were still and the person moved. Oh, In I this see. demonstration, uh -huh. you were still and I moved. The, oh, okay. The tuning same difference. Board. Though. Same thing. Got it. Same net Got effect. It. But I think that that's what was happening in the past is that people were dancing around these pipers and hearing the places where there was sound wave cancellation and interpreting it as something blocking the sound. A ring of magic, invisible rocks blocking the sound. And that's exactly what Stonehenge is like. It's a ring of rocks. Stonehenge is actually one of about a thousand stone circles in the British Isles. And there had to be a good reason for why our ancestors were building these circles of rocks. Nobody really knows why. But it's very interesting that the region of the British Isles is also the region where there's a bagpipe tradition of being able to sustain a note. So what's also interesting is that a lot of these rings of rocks are called piper stones. And there's actually a legend that two pipers led these maidens to dance in a circle and they all turned to stone. So there's actually a tradition that links pipers to stone rings. And that's all you need is two pipers in a field, you dance in a circle, you get the illusion that it's acoustic shadows cast by a ring of rocks. So they were sort of constructing the ring of stone to sort of recreate the experience of um, the pipers.
I, I believe so because since they didn't know about sound waves canceling each other out, it would have been a completely mysterious, magical phenomena that they couldn't explain. So it would have been like almost like the supernatural visitation of, hey, you're playing two pipes and all of a sudden this magic ring of rocks appears. So it would have been supernatural. So also what I've done as a second set of experiments, the first one being in an empty field, I actually went to the real Stonehenge and I had a sound source in the middle and then I walked around the outside. Of course now most of it's in ruins, but I walked around the part where it's still like there. And of course when you pass by the stone, it's going to be muffled. And when you pass by the opening, it lets the sound through. So you get that same net effect of loud and soft, loud and soft that you do for an interference pattern. So the stones themselves actually recreate the uh, effect of the Piper's Kinsman. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, In wow. fact, if you were blindfolded, you wouldn't know whether you were walking around a stone circle or an interference pattern like these people. So, um, and it makes sense because if they thought that this kind of structure was causing the interference pattern and they built it, now it recreates the interference pattern by radiating acoustic shadows. Mm, but, okay, uh, I'm sorry, you, we, we talked about this a little earlier, um, but you actually said that Stonehenge does have, it is kind of an observatory too, it does have some Right, my theory doesn't necessarily um, conflict with other theories about like the solar alignments and everything. For example, the Pipers could have been aligned with the sun, or if you thought that there was a ring of magic invisible rocks, maybe at certain times of the year, like sunset on the solstice, you would try to use the sun as backlighting to see if you could see the invisible uh -huh. rocks. That's just one speculation for why there also might be a solar alignment. But my personal opinion is to get a solar alignment, you don't need a ring of huge megaliths, you know, 30 megaliths. But, um, you know, it still could be related. But I think that the, the design of Stonehenge and these stone circles was inspired by the uh, auditory illusion of um, magic rocks from an interference pattern. Well, I, I'm sorry, I, I have to agree. I, I totally agree. That totally makes sense. Oh, thanks. So what I'm doing now is trying to advocate preserving the soundscapes of archaeological sites. It's a whole new field called archaeoacoustics. Thank you. Wow. That is so cool. I totally agree with you. Don't you? I mean, that's just like, What's your name? Steve. Steve, Steve I'm, I'm Mike. Yeah, I signed up for me. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. So, um, so I've been like giving talks and I have a web page. Um, just if you want to see my web page, it's just Google the term rock art acoustics and you'll find it. So did you go to that lecture? We you having a lecture coming up on rock art? Um, oh yeah, I was there. I gave I gave a oh, you, talk you to gave it. Yeah. You well, gave there was the main speaker. I also gave a talk on 